All right, welcome Blender Savages. So today we're gonna make fireworks right here in Blender using the uh, particles emitter right here. Bam, kaboom, chabow, chabow. Maybe that's not a fireworks sound. All right, so let's get started here. Buy on you. There we go. All right, let me bring up my screencast so y'all can see what I'm doing. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. All right, it's all right. Actually. All right, so first things first, bye-bye, cube. X key delete. Boom. All right, we're going to bring in an icosphere, and we're going to shoot our icosphere. On, our, uh, we, sorry, we are going to shoot our icosphere into the air, and that will be our firework. All right, mesh, icosphere there. There you go, shift A. You can also go up to add right here and bring in objects that way. All right, so here's our icosphere. I'm going to bring it down to half that size just so I can have more room. Commit S, 0.5 enter. There we go, brought it down half the size. Now I want to animate it going up into the sky. So first I want to keyframe the current location there. So it's at the origin there. I'm at frame one in the timeline panel. So I'm gonna hit the I key and bring up, it brings up the insert keyframe menu. I'm gonna go with a lot rot scale. There we go, for location, rotation and scale. Cool, so I keyframed all that. I'm gonna go up to about, I'm go with frame 50. I'm gonna shoot up in the sky. Let me see what I got here in the handout. How far are we going? How far are we flying? Flying. Let's see here. 20 blender units? That's how far we're going. We're going. We're going 20 blender units into the sky. G Z 20 enter. Bam! Shot it right out there. Let me zoom out. Alright, make sure that's at frame 50. Frame 50. Enter the keyframe for that. I Dot rot scale, boom. All right, let me go to frame one. Hit the play button. There we go. All right. I don't want to keep frame 250 frames. I'm going to bring this down to 110. All right. So I'm going to go right here where it says N. I'm going to type in 110 enter. Cool. So I cut down the frames to 110. That way I don't got to be animating forever. All right. So now I'm going to go to the uh, particles emitter over here. Oh, looks looks like I'm going to 120. So N to 120. There we go. N to 120. All right. So I have the uh, icosphere there selected. I'm going to go over here, my properties panel. I'm going to click on this icon right here. That's uh, particles right there. One looks like uh, like a star with stuff shooting out of it. I'm going to go with that one. All right. So click it. Nothing happened. So you got to add it in there. So I'm going to hit the plus sign right here. Boom. So we just got one attached. All right. So I'm at the play button. You can see the particles emit. There they are, training particles. There we go. All right. So now what I want to do is um, increase the number of particles being emitted. So right here, number, I increase that to 2,000. There we go. So now I'm going to get a lot more of them coming out of there. All right, just doubled it up. And the end frame, I'm going to cut down to 40. So right here says N200. So they're actually, they're actually they're emitting into frame 200. But I uh, eliminated those other frames there. So I'm going to cut it down to 40. So at frame 40, they're going to stop emitting. There we go. See, they stopped right there. So emitting, emitting. At 40, they stop, but they're still there. Okay, they're just falling into the ground. Uh, and then they only last about 20 frames. So their lifetime is 20 frames. Uh, right now, it's 50. I'm going to cut their life uh, down to 20. So they're going to live a little, lot, little less. There we go. See, they started to kind of like disappear there. I want them to kind of just randomly disappear because you can see there's kind of like a pattern. It looks like something's following it. So right here where it says lifetime randomness, I'm going to increase it to 1. And that way they'll end anywhere from frame 1 or frame 20. See? That way it doesn't look uh, so clean at the bottom. All right. So I'm going to go down here to source. I'm going to open source. Right here it says uh, emit from faces. I'm going to click inside faces. And I'll switch over to volume. And it'll emit from like the overall volume of the icosphere. Because before, just emitted from the faces. There's one from vertices, and it emits from the vertices. See, there we go. So now it emits a little differently. Press earlier on vertices. You see verts. Comes out of all the vertices, including the ones on top. So it looks kind of weird. If it was a rocket, right? A firework, the sparks wouldn't come out of the top. So let's try faces. There's faces on top as well. It doesn't look so good. It's just volume. Kind of comes out of like the center of it somewhere. There we go. All right. So I want this um, to shoot sparks, not, not this. So I'm going to bring in a plane. And I'm going to reshape it 
to the shape of a spark. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what shape of spark is, but it looks something like that, right? All right, so I can leave that plane if I want. Shift A, mesh, plane. I'm gonna follow the sequence here to sand it up. RX 90 enter, RX 90 enter. And then I'm gonna scale on the X axis, make it thinner. SX.2 enter. Oops, my mouse will fit in there. SX.2 enter, there we go, got a strip. I'm gonna move it over to the left along the X axis, uh, minus 20 blender units. G, X, minus 20, enter. There you go. Zoom out, it's way out there somewhere. All right. All right, so I'm gonna start coloring this, but to see the color, I gotta switch over to rendered, the render viewport shader. So I'm gonna click on this icon here. There we go, in the viewport shaders, give it like a good second to load. There we go. I can also hit the Z key and select the top option there, rendered. All right. Now I'm going to change the color of the world here, the background. I'm going to click on the red earth right here. There we go. Not this one down here. That's from materials. So this one here will give you uh, the ability to change the color of the world there. The color there right now, it's gray. That's that color there. I'm going to click in there and I'm going to make it black. It's going to be nighttime. There we go. Cool. Sleeping in the darkness. Oh, no, I think that song says creeping in the darkness. I don't know. I can't be singing because then I'll get flagged or something. All right. So I'm gonna go over here to my material. Sorry, my object here. I'm gonna go to materials. And I'm gonna apply a material to it. So I'm gonna hit new now. Cool, so right now it's principled BSD, uh, BSDF shader. But I want it to glow, I want it to glow. So I'm gonna click on it and change it to emission. So a different shader type. Emission, there we go. And sparks are kind of like a yellow gold color, right? So I'm gonna click inside color. And make a, try to make a color like that. All right. And the strength, I'm gonna bring it up to 20. There we go, nice and bright. Well, you kinda can't really see the brightness, right? So that's cause you gotta change uh, your render settings. So I'm gonna go, uh, put it around there. I'm gonna go over here to uh, render. This icon on the properties panel, looks like the back of a DSLR camera. I'm gonna click on that one there. Uh, ambient occlusion, not really necessary, but I like using it all the time, so I'm gonna activate that one. Uh, screen space reflections, uh, I have it on there as a default setting, that's to make things reflective. Uh, motion blur. So you can see some of that blur later. Uh, the one you really want though for the glow is bloom. That'll make it glow right here. Boom, there we go, see, now it's glowing. It's like that rod that uh, Homer Simpson had in, a, in an episode of The Simpsons. Now I'm gonna click this here. I actually know there was a rod that like saved the, um, I don't know, I don't remember. All right, the threshold, I'm bring down to zero and get more of that glow there. Boom, all right, cool. There we go. I'm going to delete the light. This light source that we have over here somewhere, I can see the, I can see it lighting that area there. I can't see the light here because it's dark. I can start clicking around. Hopefully I'll select. Oh, I got it. But did I get it? I'm not sure what I got there. But in case you can't select it, yeah, I did get it. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the outliner. Click it. Click it in there. You know it's selected once it's yellow. There we go. So it's selected there. I'm going to get rid of that light source because only one light coming from my, uh, my objects that I'm bringing from my sparks and later the other sparks that fly out of the the firework. All right, so I'm going to right click that one and then delete. There we go. Bye, Felicia. All right. Uh, my apologies if anybody watching is named Felicia. All right, so let me try to select this one here. Boom, got you. All right, kind of didn't get it. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to get the icosphere. I can also select it here. And I'm going to go over to the properties panel. Click on the material icon. And then you. And I want this to be very rough. I don't want it to reflect any light. Let's see. But sometimes uh, later when I bring in the sparks, the sparks might kind of reflect off of it. So I'm gonna go over here to roughness, make it very dull. That way it doesn't reflect. There we go. And I'm just gonna call this rough right here, this material. Oh, you probably use it again, rough. There we go. It's not really reflective of anything. All right, and I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna name this. Let me just pause it and be easier to select. All right, here we go. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna to go to rename active object. Now I'm gonna name it V. That's not a V, it's a F F W one for firework one, then enter. Cool, that's this that's this object's name now. It's not equal sphere one, it's uh F W one right there. Firework one. I could also could have named it firework one. Alright, so I wanted to emit this object here. So I'm gonna go back over to properties panel and select particles. Make sure this one's selected, not this one. Then you're gonna add a particle to it. We don't want this one to emit particles. We're gonna make this one become the particle being emitted from this one over here. 
All right, so got the, uh, that selected there. And I already have settings here for that routes coming out. So now I got to scroll down. I'm going to open render. And where it says render as, right now it's a uh, halo. That's what these little dots are that come out of it. Halos or hollows, whatever you want to call those. The little snowball. I'm going to click on it, change it to object. All right, scroll down a little bit right here. Instance object. I'm going to click inside this one. And I'm going to select that plane over there. Let's click on plane. There we go. So now I already met that plane. Let me give that plane a name. Let's see, I'm going to call it launch spark. Did I spell launch right? Or am I thinking about lunch? Launch spark. Or you can name it spark one, gold spark, whatever you want. This way I don't confuse it with other sparks that I'll bring in later. All right, pause. Go with the first firework there. Cool. And it change, should change the name there too. All right. So right now, see, that looks kind of weird. Doesn't, should be pointing up and down, look kind of flaky. If I had for top view, they'll have that direction there. So I wanted to mimic the uh, orientation of this, the rotation of that. So I'm gonna activate object rotation. There we go. So now it looks more like sparks. Hit the play button. And here we go. There we go, sound, sound effects not included, you gotta provide your own. There we go, bam, there we go. Looks like some good sparks there. All right, so now I want that burst spark, the one that pops out, right? So I'm gonna make a blue one. So I'm gonna bring in another icosphere. Shift A, mesh, icosphere. There we go. It's right there. I wanna move it out there to the left somewhere. So I'm gonna move it along the X axis, minus 24 blender units. GX minus 24, enter. There it is out there. All right, I'm gonna name this one Spark Blue. I'm gonna right click it, rename ob active object, Spark Blue. You can name it Blue Spark, but so I'm gonna main name all of these Spark. Be Spark Blue, Spark Red, Spark Pink, Spark Yellow, whatever whatever colors you wanna go with. All right, so now I gotta give it a material. So I'm gonna go here to Materials, New, and I'm gonna make this one blue. So I'm gonna click in here, Spark Blue again. Spark Blue, all right. And Principle BSCF, gotta change that. Click inside that for Surface. Switch over to Emission. There we go, color, choose a bluish color, go well, dark blue or brighter blue, whatever you want. Strength, jack that up to 20. Boom, glow in there. All right, so I got that going. Now I'm gonna go back to my original icosphere that I first brought in, the one shooting here into the sky. And I'm gonna add another particle system for this spark here. All right, so particles, leave this one alone. That one's done. I'm gonna give it a name here. So I'm gonna call it Launcher. Launcher, I'm gonna call it launcher one in case I want to make another firework, which I will later. And that's gonna have its own uh, settings here for how the sparks come out on the when it launches. All right, so plus sign for a new one. It's gonna be from a blue one right here. So I'm gonna give it the same name I've been going with, spark blue. Try to keep it consistent. Uh, most of the name doesn't matter for consistency, but it's better to keep it organized. All right, spark blue. I already see it coming out there, but no worries. I'll make the proper adjustments in a bit. All right, so this one I wanted to start at frame 50. So there we go, frame 50, it uh, stops emitting the other one. And it's gonna start this one, go with 55. That way it kinda sprays out, watch here. There we go, kinda has some trailing behind it. All right, lifetime randomness up to one. Lifetime 50, all right, so lifetime randomness up to one. There we go. Uh, emer uh, emit from it's gonna be volume. There we go. Let me scroll down over here. Open uh, open velocity. And this is how fast they come out. How much? How fast they burst out? So if you try like a hundred, they're gonna shoot way out their watch. Yeah, we don't want that. It's a little too intense. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'll go with five. I think I got five in there. There we go. So five look a little neater. There we go, looks a little neater. All right, so we'll work with some more uh, settings down here. All right, render as, so not halo, we want object. All right, and fortunately I'll name, I named that one, so now I know which one to choose from here. I'm gonna click in here, go with spark blue. There we go. Boom.
Let me click away from it. All right, it's working. Spark's kind of pull down fast though. So I'm gonna go down here. Field weights. I'm gonna reduce the gravity to half, 0.5. There we go. See how it moves now. Go a little slower now, right? So I can even reduce it even less than that. I'll float a little bit more. There you go. Bam. So I'm gonna go 0.5, but you guys can try something lower. You can play around with those settings there. That's just how fast it'll fall from there. It'll reduce it down, it'll float a little bit more. That's a zero. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave it at 0.5. I think lower than 0.5 will look better. All right. So now I'm gonna bring in another icosphere. Now it's gonna be red. All right, shift A, mesh, icosphere. There we go. Move way over there. Uh, GX minus 27 enter. GX minus 27 enter. There we go. And this one's going to be red. So uh, properties panel, materials, new, spark red. All right, I got to name it over here too. Right click it, spark red. And there we go, spark red. Uh, principal BSDF shader. Do this one first. If you change the color here, then you can go up here. You're going to have to redo the color again. So, first, change the shader type. So, emission. And I'm going to go with the red color. There we go. Strength, jacked it up to 20. Boom. Give me the fuzz there. That fuzzy light. That's good to go. So, now I'm going to click the original icon sphere here. Got him. All right, particles. <clears throat> Plus sign. And this is going to be spark red as well spark red this one's for spark red Let's name everything keep track of it you know what's what all right spark red and what are we saying settings we're going to go with so 55 and 55 so we're going to start at frame 55 and then finish at 55 that way we don't get a long stream so 200 is going to keep going see right there still going and right there training 55 55 all right so I'll just be one quick burst. There it is, but it doesn't have the uh, the red applied to it yet. Uh, that red object there. Source. I'm gonna go with volume. And here we go. Scroll down. Scroll down. Uh, velocity. I'm gonna go with the velocity here. Five. That's the speed of it. Like how fast it comes out of it. So with five. So I think I showed you guys earlier. I had a high number. Just shot everywhere. Shot way out there. All right. There we go. So we want those to be this red object here. So I'm going to render, render as. So I wanted to render uh, that red object set of the halos object. And scroll down over here. And right here, for instance, object, click in there and select the red spark, spark red. There you go. So now they're going to be red. Boom. So there's a red one. And I don't want them falling so fast. So I'm going to go down to gravity, bring that down to half. I can make something different as well. There we go. Let me click away from it so I can see it better. Cool, that looks cute. Neato. All right. Cool. I'll make another firework over here. So I'm going to bring in another Eiffel sphere. And I'm going to move it over to the right a little bit. Scale it down, move it over to the right by its whole blender units. Shift A, mesh, Eiffel sphere. It's going to be a whole other firework here. Eiffel sphere, S.5 enter, G, X. 12 enter. There we go. Move it over by 12 blender units on the x-axis. Uh, we could have duplicated this one, but if we do that, we got to redo the keyframing because then, see these keyframes? It's down here at frame 1. Sorry, at frame. Yeah, frame 1. Another at 50. They're just going to be overlapping the same space. So it's uh, probably easier to just make a new one. And I'm going to name this one FW2 for Firework 2. There we go. And I'm going to keyframe it at frame one, pause this animation, frame one. So at frame one, it's going to be down here. Frame one there. Here we are. I key, lot rot scale. Cool. And I'm going to shoot this one up a little higher than the other one. This one, they go up by, at frame 70, we're going to go up by 25 blender units along the Z. All right, frame 70. All right, so I'm going to go up there. GZ, 25, enter. There we go. Shot past that one there. So now we're going to keyframe that I key, light rod scale. Cool. All right, so I want to give it a color. I don't want it to reflect uh, any of the other light from the other stuff. 
materials. I'm going to click inside this material icon right here. And I can select my existing material there. Rough. There we go. One from front view. Zoom out. Cool. So it has uh, the roughness there. So it doesn't reflect uh, much color there. It's very dull. All right. So I'm going to add a particle system to it. This is going to be for the sparks coming out of it. So I can't reuse the old one. Because if I do, well, I can, but it's not going to look very neat. Because the other one, see the finish at 50 right there. So these parts are going to stop right there, and this thing's going to keep going up. This one keeps going up to 70, though. And then the spark's going to stop there and just shoots up, keeps going up because of inertia, I guess. So we're just going to set up another one, get some more practice here. So particles, new. Uh, the only one already has a name, right? It's called uh, Launcher 1. There we go. So it's going to be Launcher 2. There we go. Launcher 2. It's going to have a different parameters, different settings. So it's going to be Launcher 2. All right. Number of seeds. We're going to double that one up too. 2,000. Sorry, just numbers, not number of seeds. 2,000. Frame start uh, 1, and then in at 60. So 10 frames before the 70, where this one's going to be at. And at 60. Lifetime 20, so we're gonna die after 20 frames and randomness all the way to one and uh, Coming out of the volume there. That way they don't come off the top now, These other sparks you could probably leave those as face or vertices. That's okay For the ones that are burst from it, but for this one that's shooting up you're gonna want to you're gonna want that one to be volume All right, so I'm gonna scroll down here uh, Velocity I can leave it at five. If I want them to come off faster. I can uh, change the name of that too. Sorry, increase that number. Let's try 50 here, see how fast they come out. All right, so object, what's going on? Oh, I selected a different one. Oops, I don't want to do that. Five, back to five, and leave that alone. All right, so always be aware we got selected. So I just dropped the ball right there. There we go, back to this one. Got FW2, cool. All right, scroll down. All right, so now we'll try 50 over here. Scroll down over here, and object. And we're going to go with the uh, launch spark and object rotation. So respects the rotation of that. All right. So hit the play button. See what happens here. All right. So that's what happened because I increased the uh, the normal here on the velocity. Bring it down to five. There we go. Kind of flares out a lot. So I'm going to bring it down to one. There we go. Looks neater. Let's try 0.5. See how that looks. That's cool. I like 0.5. Actually, I like 0.5 better than the uh, than the one over there we have over there. There you go. So I'll leave that at 0.5. All right. So now we got to get the right. I got to get the burst shot. So it's going to shoot a gold uh, gold spark. So I can try duplicating one of these and then rename it, change the color of it. Well, I'll just bring another one in. Shift A, mesh, Ico sphere. And how far we move that one away? Let's see here. GX thirty enter. GX thirty enter. GX thirty enter. Ooh, minus enter. There we go. All right. So materials. New. Oh, gotta name it. Gotta name it. Rename. Spark gold. Enter and spark gold over here. There we go. Principal BSCF emission and goldish looking color. Something like that. Strength 20. Boom. All right. So I got the spark made for this one over here. So let me try to get it. Got him. All right. Particles and plus sign there. So we got a new one here. Spark gold. And notice I named both of these. You got to name both of them. I don't know why. Maybe just a glitch on mine. I got to name them on both. All right. And so now I'm going to have that one start at 75, then end at 80. That way it kind of has like a, a stream to it. And then end at 80. There we go. And then jack up the randomness one. Lifetime 50. And emit from volume. 
There you go, velocity. I think we go up to five. Yeah, velocity up to five. Scroll down. Physics. Ooh, physics fluid. Change the physics to fluid. Did I change the physics on these over here? I think I forgot. I did. Let's see. Red spark. Let's go with fluid. Get a better flow with that. Fluid. There we go. I think I changed the mass on those two. So I skipped the step there. Where is that at on those other ones? Fluid, 50. Change the mass to 50 on those. All right. So I went back to my original one here. And selected the red spark. Then I'm going to go with the blue spark. Went down to physics. Change it to fluid. And then change the mass to 50. That way it does that. Local, disorganized like that. Keeps a little neater. See, there we go. And now I'm going to go with the spark blue right here. Uh, Newtonian is kind of like the uh, your basic laws of physics by uh, Sir Isaac Newton. In the fluid, it'll follow the uh, properties of water. There you go. Let's bring up the mass to, was it 50? 50, 50, yeah, 50 kilo. There we go. So now we get a better burst there. Looks more like a firework, right? All right. So then this one, make sure I'm the right one. Spark gold. Physics fluid, mass up to 50. There you go. It's the overall mass of the object. So if I make it even bigger, watch this. Not too much of a difference. So if you go down smaller, you'll notice it's zero. And it's going to be really weak looking. Oh, there we go. So 50. There we go. All right. So render. It's going to go object. It's going to be in that spark gold over there. Spark gold. And here we go. There we go. Bam. All right. So you guys see that stream behind it, like each firework? That's just more particles. If you want to make the stream a little longer, just increase the end right here. See, so just try 90. See, there we go. It's a lot longer there. I think 90 is kind of excessive. There we go, side 80. Let's try 85. So that's 10, 10 frames right there. There you go. I'm going to stick to 80. I think, I think uh, five frames there is optimal. There you go. Well, they don't make sounds like that, right? All right, change the gravity 0.5 over here. There we go. Bam. And that's it. Got the render settings going. All right. So we get a camera view here. Camera angle. Kind of like, uh, let's see, this angle or no? I like looking up at it. All right. I'm going to make this my camera angle here. So I just move my mouse around. Hold down the middle mouse button. If you want to pan, like shift uh, left, right, up, and down. Hold down the middle mouse button and shift at the same time. Preferably shift first and the middle mouse button. Once you find a good view, you're going to make that your camera view. Control, alternate, zero. Boom, camera view. All right, camera cannot reach. Can't see that far. So I'm going to click on my camera frame here. There you go. So now I got my camera selected. Or if not, go to the outline and select camera there. And then the property spanner, click on the camera data there. Camera data. And that's your clip right here. Kind of like your depth of field. Oh, not depth of field, but kind of like how far you can see. I'm going to change the end here to 50,000 just to be safe. Five, zero, one, two, three. Enter. There you go, so now I can see way out there. Cool, so I can see them shooting up there. Unfortunately, I can still see these here. If I tried hiding them from the render, I'm not going to see their effect on the fireworks. So I just got to get it out of my view. So as you saw right there, I just multi-selected them. Back to uh, zero for camera view. GX, just move them out of the way. There we go. Let's move them way out there, not even near the frame, because you're going to get some of that blur there. Some of that fuzz from the light. There we go. Cool, so it looks good. Now to render it. Uh, output uh, from the file format, switch it over to AVI JPEG, click on the folder icon, give it a name, desktop, fireworks, fireworks 2020, accept, and then control 12, and just wait for that to render, sorry, control F12, I hit alt F12, there we go, control F12, Give it some time. But thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Have a safe 4th of July.